Hey everyone, welcome to another repair video. So in this video today, we're going to be working on a Xbox One, which has been sent in because it's stuck on the E100 error code. The customer sent this in, and he basically said that this console, his daughter, was sticking little lollipop sticks into the disk drive, and he opened it up to extract the the following object out of the disk drive. It worked absolutely fine until it was time to update and then now it's stuck on E100. So, common common thing that happens with a disk drive failure, it could also be the hard drive. But I've got a feeling this one's likely going to be a disk drive. So, like I said, the customer's been in this bit himself before. Um, you can see, I'm not sure if it'll come across on video, but you can see here that the it's not quite in alignment with the disk drive. So, it could just be a case that it's been incorrectly reassembled but let's turn the disk drive on let's turn the console on let's see what's happening with it and then we'll go ahead and get this fixed shall we i'll we'll pop in a hdmi and a power cable and i'm going to turn it on three two one okay so right now this is on applying update so hopefully you can see that i have repositioned my table recently but it's stuck on applying update right now. I'm assuming it will fail the update in about a minute. But we'll see. We'll see what's happening. And E100. So that's the issue we're facing. The E100 error code is a general hardware failure message. So it could be a number of things which has failed. But given the fact that the customer said that he messed around with the disk drive i'm going to say that this is likely going to be a disk drive issue so we're going to go ahead and get this thing open we've got a couple of screws missing which is absolutely fine i'll see if i've got some spares lying around just to replace these missing screws but that's not too important for now so let's start by removing the disk drive okay Let's unscrew the hard drive as well because I can't get to the connectors. Right, so the connectors are in properly, which means it's definitely going to be a hardware failure with the either the disk drive or the motherboard or the uh, hard drive. So let's pop the rest of this out of the way a second. And let's remove this plastic cover. There we go. Okay, so to go into the disk drive itself is really simple. We've got four Phillips screws, so there's two just here, and then there's two underneath this piece of foam here. So this piece of foam is so, sort of like an anti-vibration foam. Um, it stops the disk drive from skipping. And there's two, there's two screws underneath there, so we need to peel it back a little bit just to get inside the actual disk drive. Uh, of course, it looks like this has already been opened, this disk drive, so that's going to be a 
problem. Okay. So inside the disk drive then. So I don't see anything physically wrong with the disk drive. But that said, this SATA cable's damaged. So if we take a look at the cable there, we can see that cable is breaking. Which means that it's not going to be able to read the disk drive. There we go, you see? So, I think, if we change that cable, this will probably work. So I'm going to grab a cable, because that's going to be replaced regardless. Alright, so I've got myself a replacement cable here, and this one looks fairly good. So, what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm just going to pop this inside here. There we go. I'm going to screw this back together for now. Because I don't think there's anything wrong with the disk drive. I think that this has been damaged during disassembly. And chances are they're just going to work when we replace that cable. Now, the problem is when you have a disk drive error, the console will work absolutely fine. Apart from with discs, of course, but the rest of the console will work absolutely fine until it's time to update the software. And when we update the software, it does a security check to make sure that we have a genuine drive, um, or at least a genuine daughter board. Uh, make sure that we can't install any copied games or anything like that. It makes sure that it's not been modified in any way, and if it doesn't recognise the drive, it will throw out 8100 every single time. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this back in. So let's take the screw because the chances are we're not going to be re we're not going to be disassembling this again. So it looks like this console's had a clean. So I'm not going to bother taking it fully apart and cleaning it. There's just no point. It looks like it's been cleaned. Uh, and the customer does know how to disassemble it, so he, he knows enough to be able to clean the console as well. Um, a little rule of mine, I'm not disassembling that and taking that heatsink off if I don't have to. Um, it's not important enough to worry about, so I'm not going to be cleaning that and risking damaging the board at all. Uh, it looks like, like I said, it looks like it's had a clean, so, you know, why risk breaking it if there's no need to? Right, so let's just plug this disk drive in, and we'll pop it into position. Pop that into position as well. And I'm going to turn it back on again. Straight away that's carried on. Straight away that's gone over the um, second stage. So let's let this run through. And hopefully it should finish it, finish the update, and hopefully it should all work fine. Um, obviously I'll need to test it and make sure that it reads a disk. And if it don't, then we'll be changing the disk drive anyway. But by the looks of it, the only reason that this isn't working is because of a damaged disk drive SATA cable. So I'm going to let this run through, and I'll be back shortly. There we go. All done. Right, so let's go ahead and test it with the game. So I'm going to I'm going to pop in Project Cars, which is my test game. Let's 
there we go that's reading absolutely fine so that's coming up just here um, usually it shows up on the left hand side but it's showing up here but it is installed in the game it's working absolutely fine so let's go ahead and turn this off and now let's go ahead and get this thing reassembled shall we I'm going to flip it around And I'm just going to pop the screws back in. So we've got one there. We've got one there. Okay, let's replace this missing screw from the power supply. Uh, okay, so now that we've got the screws back in, let's go ahead and pop the top on. And I did notice that this foam was a little bit messed up when I took it apart, so let's just fix that. There we go. So that's back in place nicely. And let's try and get this lined up in such a way where it's actually going to go together properly, shall we? There we go. Yeah, so it's it's a little bit bent out of shape, the top frame. But uh, I'm not sure there's anything we can do about that, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. Right, I'm going to find another screw for this here and get this back uh, together properly. Okay, so this case is not going to go back together properly. It's been quite stubborn.
Right, I see what's wrong. I can see what's wrong. Okay, so this isn't lining up properly. And I believe the reason is because of this little groove just here. So this little groove here is is pretty badly damaged. Uh, so I'm going to have to try and push that out a little bit. It's stopping the disc drive from lining up properly. Um, so if I can't push it out, I'll cut it out and uh, I'll just remove it from the equation because if this doesn't line up properly then the disk drive is possibly not going to take in discs properly with the case on and even if it does the sync button isn't going to click properly because it's pushing the case out right that should be okay so just use the screwdriver to pry that back into position and hopefully you can make that out but it looks to be in a bit of a better shape now uh, hopefully it will allow me to line up this disk drive with the grooves so on the disk drive there are four grooves just here and these have to line up with the case in order for it to go back together properly and keep everything locked in nice and tight so fingers crossed that's going to allow me to line it up fully now there we go that's locked in that's much better so the case shouldn't push out now and also it should line up properly to allow me to put the bottom on so let's pop in some screws and I've got a replacement screw as well so we were missing one green screw Um, just got to get this one to line up. There we go. That's gone through the thread, uh, through the guide. Slightly out of place there, but a uh, little bit of persuasion just to get it into place. There we go. And finally, let's pop on the bottom. That should be good to go. There we go. Very nice. Okay, so let's give this one final test then. And I do need to get my own disc out of there as well anyway, so let's do that. That is much smoother now. Much, much smoother. There we go. That's done. Right. Let's turn it back on. And there we go. So we can see there that Project Cars is installing. And if we eject the disc, you'll see that it disappears. So this is working absolutely perfectly. Just pop it back in once more. Now 
there we go so I'm gonna leave that for a couple of seconds just to make sure it gets past 0.0%, .0 and then we'll call this done. There we go. So that's actually started installing now. It took a little while. The disc is uh, fairly scratched up, so it might take quite a while. So I'll just eject that disc. And as you can see from the disc, it is pretty beaten up, and that's why it took a while. Um, it's quite dirty. It is. It does live in a workshop environment, so you know it, it gets used all the time as well, in and out of consoles for testing. So that's why. Right. Okay. So this console is done. And just to summarise, the customer sent this in because it was stuck on E100, which. The customer opened the console up himself to try and remove the foreign object and in the process damaged the SATA cable that's used for transferring data from the disk drive. So as you can see there, it's got a little bit of a, a break in the cable. Um, it's, they're not the strongest of things, especially when they're this short. They're easy to bend and manipulate and um, damage, especially on the end of the connectors. Not too much of an interesting repair. But nonetheless, it might be something that you are facing yourself. Always check the cables. Uh, I should have probably ch checked this before I took the disk drive out and started messing around inside it. But always check your cables. Make sure that your cables are good before you sit there and try replacing the disk drive itself. Because if I'd have replaced the disk drive itself, it still wouldn't have fixed the issue because I probably would have used the same cables. Because these little things, this small with angled connectors, are very hard to come across outside of a console so i probably would have used the same original cables uh, but that being said it was the cable that was actually at fault with this console so thanks very much for watching guys let me know what you think down in the comments down below remember to hit that thumbs up button if you enjoy the video and if you want to see more trying to fix videos hit the subscribe button and turn on bell notifications so you're notified when i upload I'm trying very, very hard to get to 5,000 subs by the end of the year. And if you could subscribe, that would really help me out a lot. So thanks very much for watching, guys. And until next time, see you later. Bye for now.